From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and welcome to our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. In this episode, we sit down with T.G. Shepard, brand new Christmas single. T.G. with his wife, Kelly Lang, and longtime friends, the Oak Ridge Boys, collaborating on White Christmas. We would feature that. We'd also get some thoughts from T.G. on the Elvis movie, starring Austin Butler. T.G. with a great Elvis connection early in his career. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with T.G. Shepard. <laughs> Welcome back in, everybody. Coffee Country and Cody. It's so much fun to have a rotating door. One person walks in, <laughs> one person walks out. It's like that spinning door. Janelle Arthur just left, and now we welcome T.G. Shepard. How you doing, friend? I'm doing great. This is the middle of the night for music people. You know that. I just rolled out of bed to come over here and do this. The other 9 o'clock. The, yeah, other, yeah, nine yeah. o'clock. the other 9 o'clock. But no, it's, it's always good to, to come on the show. It's always good to get a chance to visit with you, Kel. You know that. Man, I've known you probably as long as I've known just about anybody in this town because you used to come over and do the show. Did you do the show with Ralph when we started? Yeah, when sure. the Because Ralph was only there for a couple months yeah. when I came to town in 2001, and I guarantee you were there within the first two I months. I was, and Bill yeah. Cody will tell you that I am his oldest and longest friend in music. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, we've known each other. I, I guess I'm the artist that's known him longer than any of the other artists, so we go way back. Well, you're more patient. He's irritated a few people, and they're not friends anymore. <laughs> but you're a patient man, T.G. So. <laughs> Wait, I think he's calling in on line that. one and right I now. I don't know about that. <laughs> he's going to question you about that, Charlie Mattis. All right, so I know, we're, I know we're talking Christmas music in a little bit, but I have to ask, because you're one of the few people I know who actually not only knew, but truly had a relationship with Elvis Presley. So what well, did you think of the movie what did you think of austin butler's performance i thought the movie was good and i wish they had shown two sides of him more that Mm -hmm. was his uh, humor side Mm -hmm. because he was a funny man Mm -hmm. loved a lot of practical jokes and loved to laugh and i wish they had uh, probably mentioned a little more of his spiritual side because he was really a very spiritual guy but other than that i thought tom hanks nailed uh, Parker, because I was I worked with Colonel Parker for years as a liaison between RCA and Colonel Parker and Elvis. And uh, boy, you could broker a world war uh, um, if, if you had that relationship. You could be you, like it, Switzerland, right? I mean, it was tough. Yeah. It was it was yeah. a tough wow. relationship yeah. between Colonel and myself because he was such a perfectionist, and he it was either his way or the highway. And of course, Austin Butler did a phenomenal job really as Elvis. Did. I mean, he lived it, breathed it, ate it, and slept it, and you can tell. When you were watching it, were there scenes that you thought, I was there yeah. when? Oh. A lot of them. The yeah. opening night in Las Vegas at the International Hotel, I was there. I was on tour with him a lot of times. And uh, of course, at Graceland, God, I was there for years. And so, you know, it was like a trip down memory lane for me to watch that movie because I actually put myself in the scenes because I would sometimes I'd see a scene in the movie and I knew that I, it, in the real world I was standing off to the side and I remember those things happening. And it was just I actually went and saw it uh, a second time and enjoyed it more the second time because I caught things that I didn't get the first time around. But it was incredible. What was a scene that you think they really captured that you were like, yes, it happened just like that? The comeback special. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That was the 68 comeback special was really and truly it was just like being there. Uh, I mean, it, it they nailed it. They actually nailed it. And the one scene that I remember the most in the movie is the last scene, mm. which was the saddest. Mm. It was just really... Uh, Sad for me to see, you know, to see how it all ended. And the morphing from Austin Butler to the real Elvis oh. is like seamless, you know. Oh, it, yeah. it, it yeah. was incredible. Yeah. I mean, he really and truly, he did his homework. I mean, he really and truly for two years there just did only that. And afterwards, I mean, he was really exhausted. Yeah. He was in bad shape health-wise because he put everything he had into it. But I, I thought it was incredible. You speak of of Christmas time, 
uh, I, I do a lot of interviews this time of year. People want to know what you do for Christmas and whatever, and they want to always want to know your favorite Christmas memory. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was always the Christmases at Graceland because, oh. I mean, it, it was that time of the year when Elvis would, uh, he was a kid. Okay. And uh, it, it it afforded him that luxury of being a kid at that time of the year. And he just really loved Christmas and loved Christmas music. And loved to give big gifts to people, right? <laughs> oh, God. I asked him one time, I said, why do you give such huge gifts? Why? He said, let me tell you how it started, he said. I started out when I was living in the housing projects of uh, Lauderdale Courts in Memphis, and the kid about two or three doors down would bring me his comic books that his mom and dad had bought him after he read them, and he gave them to me. And he said it was the greatest feeling to have someone give me something I really wanted or needed. And he said, I swore that someday if I ever got in a position to do that for other people, I wanted to experience them having that feeling. So he said, I give exorbitant gifts because I want to see the reaction on people's faces because I know what mine was when I received a gift like comic books as a kid. Wow. That's where it all started. Isn't that special? He was incredible. He He really was. was. Well, we're talking about Christmas, so tell us about this song that you got. Oh, wow. Kelly and I have been talking about doing a Christmas album for several years. And we ran into a time problem this year of getting a a Christmas album finished. Last year, we released a song called Christmas in Mexico, which Mm -hmm. was a song that she and I wrote. And we thought we'd do a Christmas album this year and include that. But we ran out of time. Mm -hmm. And um, so we thought, well, let's just go in and do one more single, and then we'll make it part of our Christmas album for 2023. We'll do a Christmas album for next year. And so we have always loved White Christmas. I mean, who doesn't love that Christmas song? And who doesn't know the words to that song? So Kelly and I always listen to Michael Bublé and Shania Twain's version of this song. Because it kind of had a different twist to it, a different spin. And so she said, let's do that type of version, but let's bring in the Oak Ridge Boys. And Mm. I said, good idea. They can do the doo-wops. (laughs) <laughs> so I called up the Oaks, and of course, instantly they said yes, and they came into the studio. And I can only tell you this, when one of the Oaks walks into a room, it's exciting, but when they all walk in together, the earth shakes. Mm-hmm. They are so charismatic and <laughs> so talented. So it, it came about that way, just asking them to come in the studio and then picking the song. And uh, I've really had a blast in the studio with them. We're going to play it right now. This is White Christmas T.G. Shepherd, Kelly Lang, and the Oak Ridge Boys. You're hearing it here on WSN. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to T.G. Shepard hanging out with us in studio this morning. I honestly, when you came in, I was like, good, I can take a break. I can just go in the back and get some more coffee and hang out. You're so <laughs> used to doing this radio thing. You've been doing your own show for how long now over at Sirius? Well, four years. Okay. Three years was on Elvis Radio. And then yep. last year we moved over to Prime Country, Channel 58. And uh, it's fun being able to do your own radio show. <laughs> But you know what? Now I know why you guys make the big bucks, because it's not easy. (laughs) It's not easy. There's a lot of preparation that goes into a radio show. Yeah. When when you're interviewing an artist that's your guest, you've got to know what they're into and what's going on, and you've got to listen to their answer. Also, at the same time, preparing yourself for the next question. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, but I'm having a blast doing the T.G. Shepherd show on Sirius XM well, Prime Country. You said you said the best thing I've ever heard anyone say about an interview. We have to listen to the answer. Because yes. so many people, they ask a question, right. and no matter what the answer is, they're moving on to the next point and Your not listen. Your brain listen. is going in several oh, yeah. different yeah. directions yeah. when you're doing a radio yeah. show. Gene Watson told the best story one time about, uh, Bill asked him about Porter Wagner. He goes, oh, Porter would interview him, but he wouldn't hear a thing you're saying. He goes, how you doing, Gene? He goes, well, I'm really not doing it. Great, great. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it, friend. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I want to ask you, because you have the unique position that you are interviewing all of your friends. 
Like yeah. you're interviewing mm-hmm. Reba, you're interviewing yeah. Clint yeah. Black later today. Yeah. Is it more difficult to sit down and interview somebody that you know extremely well? No, it's easier because okay. you've got stories. Okay. You've got things that you can draw from. You know, we uh, I've worked tours with uh, all those artists. We've done dates together. There's right. funny things that's happened. There's so yeah, it's really easier if it's somebody that I know than a, a, a new artist. So. Sometimes I feel like it's harder because I take for granted a lot of backstory uh, that my listener or viewer doesn't actually know. You yeah. know, I, I start in on a story and I'm like, oh wait, I have to set this up because there's a lot of stuff that happened beforehand that yeah. they don't know about. And when I do interviews, I always like to use one question that will take the artist in a direction that nobody doesn't really think. For example, back when I was on Elvis Radio, I had Lionel Richie as my guest. I love him. And I asked in the middle of the interview, I said, Lionel, is it true that when you were on your way to becoming a recording star, you were already on your way to the ministry to be a preacher. And he said, yes, I was. And I got the call to be in the Commodores, and I went the music route instead. So that opened up a whole spiritual side of Lionel's life that everybody loved because they hadn't heard that story. So Isn't that special? when I do interviews, I always try to pick a question that will take the artist in a different direction that will open them up about maybe something we don't know about, it, about their life or career. Hmm. Who do you want to have on the show that you haven't had yet? Oh, Garth. Okay. I'd like to have Garth on. And, he and might be listening this morning. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to have Garth on the show because Garth Brooks is probably one of the most amazing human beings in our business. Mm-hmm. He... He is a marketing genius. Mm-hmm. He knows how the business works, and he looks out for his fans. And I look, I, I really respect that deeply. And any time you see Garth, I don't care if it's in a grocery store or on the street, if he meets you two years later, he's going to call you by name. How does he's he do that? He's uncanny at doing that. I don't know if he went to uh, had a course on that or whatever, but he does. It's amazing. I really think he has a photographic memory. I, I do really too. Do. I do too. Yeah. He just does not. And nine times out of ten, will remember your kids or your wife's name too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. So, you know, Garth would be one. He and Trisha both probably would be the two that I really would like to have. But maybe maybe they'll come one of these days. We'll just put it out there sure. for everybody. Um, <laughs> You have some stuff coming up. I was looking on the schedule, and I'm like, oh, you're smart. You're getting out of Dodge, and you're going on the high seas. The country music cruise coming up in January. I think it might be sold out, but there might be there might be a few cancellations for anybody yeah, that's interested. Yeah, I think usually there. there's people that can't make it at the last minute, so if you still go on there, you might be able to make it. But we did it last year, and it was just a blast. I mean, you're on there with a 25, 30, 35 artist. There's a show going on 24-7. Right. And it's just a lot of fun. And if, if you haven't been on the country music cruise, you need to get on the country music cruise. It is a lot of fun. So, yeah, we'll be going where it's warm in January. <laughs> I said that's the whole point. You look at it, you're like, what months would I want to not be in Middle Tennessee? There you go. January and February. Those go. are my first two they, picks. That's the so. reason I book myself on that every year. <laughs> get on the boat and get to where the sunshine is. Uh, you've got a song. I want you to set this up for us. We're going to play Black Coffee. And I said, that's very appropriate. For, for this, this morning. morning. I'm still Thank you. just now getting awake. You know, I, I hadn't done a country solo album in 22 years. Really? Yeah. And so about 18 months ago, I recorded Midnight in Memphis and released it. Really longer than that. And uh, there was uh, a lot of new music on the album. Uh, but I wanted, and, and Kelly wrote a few of the songs on mm-hmm. the album, my wife Kelly Lang. And um, But there was a song that I had to record because... Lacey J. Dalton would open shows for me in Vegas and on the road, and I would always go to the wings to hear her sing this song, and I swore that someday I would record the male version of it. Mm. So I decided to put Black Coffee on my new album, Midnight in Memphis. It's out now, available wherever you download, stream, or listen to yeah, music. Yeah, or go to tgshepherd.com or YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or, you know, just wherever. Our love to Kelly. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. And, of course, don't forget White Christmas, the new song with the Oak Ridge Boys and Kelly Lang is out as well. This is Black Coffee, so pour yourself another cup and listen in. You're hearing it on WSM and watching on Circle Television all around the world. Black coffee, blue morning, toast is burning and the rain keeps pouring. Bad feeling. 
I'm losing you Black coffee Eric Markham, WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming J. Patrick Tittle, Copyright 2022 Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC